Hey guys, John Grimsmo here. I just had the urge to film a quick little video about how we label and engrave all kinds of stuff, uh, specifically around here, around the current area. So let me show you. First, I gotta pull these handles off. First example. Ta-da! So I've become a super huge fan of engraving uh, details into our knife parts. So here we have Proudly Made in Canada, Rask, and March 2021. And after this gets uh, tumbled, it blends out super smooth and the engraving really pops. Love that. I even added, because I have five axes, I added a tiny little, can you see this? Right in this little wall, it says Rask. Now, why did I do that? There's no reason, it's just awesome. I thought it'd be really cool. And when the knife is together and finished and you flip it open, or you can also see it when it's closed a little bit, and you look right here in the little cutout of the lock bar cutout, you can see it. And it's just that extra little like, oh wow, they really thought of that, didn't they? I like that, I appreciate that. Another thing we've done always is engrave Grimsmo knives on the inside of the pocket clip. Now, John, why do you engrave something that you never really see? Well, because somebody sees it eventually. And sometimes, sometimes you can see the reflection, you can see it right there. It's there. I just want people to know it's there. It's pretty cool. So the next thing that I need to do to this fixture, and I've started doing to my other fixtures, when I'm loading new handles, you're looking at this and you kind of don't fully know, okay, do they go this way? Do, do they go this way? No, do they go this way? No, do, do they go this way? No, they don't. Oh, oh, they go this way. And like, I know how to do it. It doesn't take me that long. I, I know how to do it first time every time, but it's that little hesitation of not knowing, not being fully 100% sure. Cause yes, the clamps have a swoop to them, but it's not super clear. So. What I've started doing, and you see it on these new fixtures, simple little engraving outline that perfectly matches the water jet cutout of the part. So I'm gonna put that engraving on that fixture and it's just it just makes things obvious. Like, you're not gonna mess this up. It's super clear. And it's just fine enough that you see it. That's really cool. Um, another thing, I am making, I've started making Norseman parts on the current. I'll probably do a video about that. Still in the prototyping stage right now. But because of that, I can put little prototyping engravings, tiny little letters on my part. This one says negative 0.0015 uh, lock face. That way, as this part goes through heat treat and tumbling and grinding and blah, 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 um, we have a record engraved onto the blade knowing that this one is different. This was made on the Kern. Uh, it has this specific geometry, 0015 negative. And then when Eric's putting it together, he knows that that's the one that does that. And he can tell me it was this one that worked or this one that didn't work. So every prototype's got a different number on it. That's pretty cool. Um, even little things like here, like I, I write Eroa pull stud, 35 Newton meters, 25 to 30 foot pounds is the conversion. So when I'm tightening, torquing this pull stud, uh, I give it 25 to 30 foot pounds and I never have to think about it again because it's right there. And the vices, these are, fifth axis does an amazing job. Um, you got 50 millimeters this way, you got two inches this way, maximum torque 55 foot pounds right where you're doing it. It's that's, of course, that's what you need. You need to be told every time, right in your face, how to do it so that you never forget. Conversely, go around to the back of the Aroa, to the 72 millimeter side that I've started to load out. I'm machining these pallets. So I have two lock bar insert fixtures here. Um, they look identical, but they are not identical. This one is for Rask. This one is for Norse, Norse Ma. Norse Ma. The uh, engraving faded out by the end because I had a concentricity error on the outside of the part, but the outside of the part doesn't matter in this scenario. So it's for Norseman, even though the end is cut off at the end. But that's cool. So I engraved it, I think, on both sides. Yep, 
this side worked out much better. Focus. There we go. That's how the engraving should be. Side note, I don't know why one side worked and then I rotate 180 and machine the other side and it didn't work. Something's weird. Don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. Um, not super important, but yeah, that turned out great. Um, fun fact about these pallets, see the hole on that side, and this side does not have a hole, this side has my clamps. Uh, the hole always has to go towards the, uh, ro the robot arm, because you could put a uh, RFID chip in there, RFID chip, so that the robot knows which pallet it loaded. I don't have that feature, I don't want that feature, but that reminds me which way the pallet goes on so that I know hole goes towards the robot, my clamps go towards me, everything works. So yeah, it's really nice to start seeing multiple pallets getting loaded up here. I've got my uh, grinding wheel dressing tool there, and then I've got Rask pallet, Norseman pallet, and then whatever else I want to put on here. And I have lots of ideas to load this thing up. So that's cool. Okay, here's another big one. Another big labeling trick for you guys. Our shop is getting big, it's getting busy. There are 10 human beings that work in this company now. It's insane, it's amazing. Um, there's parts everywhere. We make a little bit of scrap, there's bad parts. Everything has to be labeled because a bad part looks just like a good part uh, because the tolerances are so small, you don't see them or maybe there's a little dent or a little scratch or a little chip or something, like please label your parts. So for example, I machined two tombstones wrongly. Um, one I did wrong and one had a problem. Um, so I take a Sharpie and I write big old X's on it. And I say bad, taper, this is tapered. Um, Lock bar insert fixtures, put a bunch of X's on them. I kept these to film a video, but otherwise I'm just gonna like throw them away. Um, bad, bad, bad. Red bins for bad, even though these screws are actually good, I'm just storing them in there. But that's a good example of me being dumb. Don't use a red bin, which is a bad bin, for parts that are actually good. Um, yeah, things like that. And then, you know, we've, we've got our racks of parts. These parts are good, they're ready to go. We've got, you know, lapped rasp blades in these beautiful foam things that are kind of, they're not labeled, but they're organized and like ready to go. So there you go, hope you enjoyed that. A couple quick tips on labeling and, and, on labeling and engraving stuff. Um, I've got lots more examples, but I'm gonna save those for future videos because they apply to future videos. But uh, for one, I just kinda wanna show off the beautiful tool changer. But speaking of engraving, I have, how many engraving tools do I have in here? One, kind of two, three, kind of four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a lot of dedicated engraving tools that all they do is engraving. Some of the ball mills are a bit more multi-purpose, but these Lakeshore tapered engraving tools, um, I love these things. I've got, that one's my beater, and then I've got, I forget exactly which what, but this one is only for um, soft stainless steel blades. This one's only for hard stainless steel lock inserts. This one's only for titanium. This one is for engraving Norseman serial numbers, which is a 10 thou radius. So yeah. All right, I was gonna wrap this up, but I got one more good example for you guys. On the Kern, it has a paper band filtration system. So coolant floods through the paper, and you can see how much garbage is collecting already. This is just the little floaters in the coolant. Uh, that works quite well, I think, I don't actually know, I think it's either 15 or 20 micron. Um, but because we're doing grinding in the, in the machine for the blade bevels, uh, we're producing little tiny, tiny little fines, which is much smaller than that. So I added these amazing McMaster coolant filters. Um, they're about 550 bucks each, and I changed it to 10 micron in. See, again, about labeling, that's what I'm talking about using yellow paint marker, 10 micron in, which goes into a five micron, another bag out, and then to the machine. And that has severe, like incredibly filtered our coolant and I noticed it. 
um, less dust and less garbage accumulating in the machine and all the tools. It's fantastic. So, labeled filter. I have 10 micron extra filters right here. I have five micron extra filters right here. I've even labeled each bag because you don't know what they are once the label falls off and the sticker goes away and you don't know they're way on the shelf. They're not where they're supposed to be. Um, and we have this same filter on the Mori and we have this same filter on the Nakamura. Um, so everybody's got their own little dedicated things. And then I've also added this 3D printer triple gauge cluster here with printed in vertical text in after 10 micron filters after 5 micron filters and I can actually see I'm going to turn the coolant on right now I'll show you the pressure drop that I'm having right now with very dirty filters um, I need to replace them real quick okay everything's good coolant on there we go All right, look at this pressure drop in 55 PSI. After 10 micron, we got 40 something PSI. After five micron, we got about 35 PSI. So we are dropping pressure as we go through the one filter and then through the second filter and then out. Um, this is Kern's filter. So we're seeing about 50, 57, 50, yeah, about 57. 57 there, 55 or 6 there, close enough with two different gauges. So I'm going to replace these filters and then this should read probably 40, I think it was, across the board with new filters. So um, this is the first filter change since I put these in. I have to establish the, the pressure drop um, uh, limit, basically. So 55 down to, you know, 35. And then I'll put a label here somewhere that says, you know, I, Anything over a 20 PSI pressure drop, replace filters. So that's my next step for these, but very happy with that. And uh, overall, very happy with this machine. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Sometimes I like just throwing information at you guys. So I, I'm trying to focus it into specifically actionable things, not just word vomit for an hour, which is also super fun, but um, I want you guys to get something out of my videos and hopefully I can make that happen. So, see you next time.